the government says there's no money to give NHS staff a decent pay rise. A quarter of our children live in poverty. Millions are barely surviving on poverty wages. But there's enough money for a new royal yacht that could cost over £200 million. Over the past year, the Tesco share price has declined by 28%. But if you are a shareholder, don't worry because every step is being taken to protect your investment. I bought this cheese from Tesco and noticed it was security tagged. The UK's food poverty rate is amongst the highest in Europe. So if you're one of the 8.4 million people in the UK living in food poverty, don't be tempted to rob stuff from Tesco's because you are more likely to find yourself in prison than a corrupt government minister. We can be sure that Boris Johnson never went short of anything when he was a boy. Artist Deborah Aitken has been exploring the early life of the Prime Minister when he was a pupil at Eton, that elite school that has produced many other Prime Ministers, cabinet members and criminals. So I was doing a project, an art project on Boris Johnson and that involved looking into his past and Eton College. I went down to Eton College as well, did a lot of research about the college and these kids go to school with a tuck box and they keep some of their treasures in there so I went and bought a tuck box and I put the treasures in that I thought Boris may have had as a child including pictures of Churchill and Thatcher um, some books how to skew statistics how to speak Latin uh, I actually went into New and Lingwood and this lovely gentleman spent a fair amount of time with me I pretended that I knew somebody was going to be starting in Eton in September and I said I'd like to get him a present and he suggested a silk scarf and I thought mm, he's a grubby little boy I said I think I need something smaller I ended up buying a book on Eton colors but he gave me um, this printout of what each boy would need when they start at Eton College it says here new boy priceless 2019 three-piece wool tail suit 225 pounds wool tail coat 170 pounds, wool waistcoat 65 pounds, white performance tunic cotton shirt 25 pounds or 7450, disposable ties 7 pounds, collar studs 5 pounds. Thanks to artist Deborah Aikens for that. And we will be returning to Deborah in a future program. Well, that's uh, him in prison. It's very difficult for people like me to get anywhere near a government minister. For some time now, I've wanted to ask Matt Hancock when he will be releasing the data showing his director's dividend from his sister's company. You know, the one that received an uncontested government contract for PPE. Well, something happened that was amazing last night because I dreamt that I was actually interviewing Matt Hancock. Mr Hancock, 
explosive emails have revealed that direct awards of PPE contracts worth millions went to VIPs with connections to your party. You've engineered this crisis, haven't you? Are you and your colleagues turning the government into a crime syndicate? We have a clear route out of this crisis, but this is no time for complacency, it's a time for caution. So, caution for you then is covering up the truth about well-connected people exploiting the chance of a lifetime to make huge fortunes out of the pandemic. If, like me, you get the call, join me and get the jab. Uh, Mr. Hancock, I've already had two jabs. I want you to join me now in trying to find out the truth. It seems that you're part of a crime syndicate rather than a government. What about your mate and local pub landlord who got millions out of a medical contract? It's an incredibly important question and we're working on it right now. And in fact, I had a meeting on this yesterday to make sure that we can get the rules right. What rules are you talking about? You're a Secretary of State. Why can't you just answer the question? You've been doing everything you can to keep a lid on the names of VIP contacts and those responsible for putting them in the VIP lane for those contracts. Because of cronyism, the public has had to pay more for PPE contracts. Can you please answer the question? This is an incredibly important question. And in fact, after being vaccinated tomorrow morning, I'm then going to give a speech on precisely this topic. So you've asked it at a very good moment. I don't understand. Why do you have to make a speech about it tomorrow? Can't you be open and transparent now instead of just dodging the question? Uh, so, uh, you might have noticed you struck a chord uh, with your question. It's something I care deeply about. There's a huge amount for the UK and that the UK can help collaboratively working with others around the world uh, to, uh, to, to... To tell the truth. Thanks very much indeed. Mr Hancock. Mr. Hancock, Mr. Hancock, you've not answered my question. Mr. Hancock, you've not answered my question. Mr. Hancock. Following the arrest of Liverpool Mayor Joe Anderson, Liverpool's Labour establishment was plunged into disarray. Keir Starmer described Joanne Anderson as a breath of fresh air and she was duly selected as Labour's candidate following a selection process that was rigged against the left. The actual election saw Labour's vote reduced from 52.6% in 2016 to 38.5%. In her election address she stated, the old style of politics will not be around on my watch. As it turned out, the old style was very much in evidence when Anderson handpicked all the members of the cabinet. We invited Joanne onto the programme, but the invitation was declined. Tony Benn had some great insights into the way New Labour changed politics that I think are relevant here. If you're elected, your job is to represent the people who elect you and to change the system so the system meets the needs of those who elect, who elect you. But nowadays, uh, we don't represent, we manage people. When you're elected now, your job is to change the people so they fit the system which runs the world. And the difference between representation and management is, is very strong and people don't feel represented anymore. They feel they're being managed. So they get cynical and angry. And I think you'll never make progress until this is explained to people, so at least they know what they're up against, and at least then see the best way forward. But there's been a fundamental um, erosion of what you might call the democratic principle, that the laws are made by the people you elect, you can remove, and who therefore have to listen to. And the second thing is, of course, the Labour leadership have, have gone along with that, new Labour have gone along with all that.
Liverpool is now a Tory laboratory experiment for the closing down of local democracy. The results of the experiment will depend in part how Labour councillors respond. Will they resist more privatisation and cuts? Will they demand the city is run by elected councillors rather than unelected commissioners? Well, one thing is certain. They will find it hard to ignore the growing anti-cuts movement in the city. What these cuts have all led to is Liverpool Council passing a budget which means £15 million per annum reduction in services and a 5% increase in council tax. And part of the £15 million put in services is the one-stop shops that we're picketing against. These are a vital service for local people, particularly pensioners, disabled and those without ready access to the internet. We need it local. We need services where people can go into a local community if they've got a problem and they can speak to someone face to face. There was a fella who was living in an unsuitable accommodation and he said this has been going on for ages now and I don't know what to do and I want to get on the property pool and I need to speak to someone about it because we said you can do it online. He said I don't know how to do things online, my kids have to do it for me. And a lot of people who are hard of hearing, my mum and dad are elderly now. They can't do these phone calls, press one, press two, old this, old that. You know, because they can't even hear it half the time. So you need face-to-face -face places where people can go and get that support that they need. We're a country where we can afford to spend billions on increasing our nuclear stockpile by 40%, enough to wipe out humanity, but we can't fund our public services. Stay with us because later on I'll be asking film director Ken Loach why do we need socialism? Let's have a musical break now. It's a song composed by Tommy Kerbo that highlights the threat to Oglet Shore. Liverpool City Council supports the removal of green belt status from land adjacent to Liverpool John Lennon Airport. They support the plan by Peel Holdings to extend the runway and this song is inspired by the grassroots community campaign to save Oglet Shore next to the airport. <laughs> Seeing Auckland as 
Greedy fat cat cake till you get a belly ache. We will fight for a glass show. It doesn't. If, like myself, you were unfortunate enough to be listening to BBC Radio on May Day, you would have heard this. Portion. We'll be talking to the author Arundhati Roy about what's going on in India at the moment. And it's May Day, which means Morris dancing. You're listening to Today with Justin Webb. As the propaganda arm of the Tory government, you would expect the BBC to focus on Morris dancing rather than workers' rights. On May Day, International Workers' Day, Liverpool TUC organised a well-attended March of Resistance. Before the rally, I was able to catch up with Felicity Dowling, who's been campaigning for many years to keep the NHS out of the hands of the private sector. The campaign I'm invested in is that to defeat the white paper for the NHS. We want a proper NHS national, publicly funded for everybody, providing comprehensive care. We know from what the football fans did that a huge campaign can stop things. We want to protect the NHS from the white paper is a huge campaign. Now my big campaign is the campaign around Save Liverpool Women's Hospital and maternity care and the terrible issue of increased infant mortality and more babies in Liverpool for instance dying before they're one. We urgently need a fully funded NHS properly provided with patient care as its focus, not profit. Protests continue against commissioners coming into Liverpool to oversee the work of the council. Here is the chair of the Merseyside Pensioners Association, Julie Lyon-Taylor, at the May Day Rally in Liverpool. I can't see any Labour councillors. I can't see any Labour MPs. So, I've got a message just for them, and maybe you can take it back to them. And my first message is, do you know, if the Black Lives Matter people in America behave like our councillors. No one would have heard the name George Floyd. We hear the name George Floyd because they had the guts and they were putting their lives on the, on the line, going out to let that be known what was going on. What we want our councillors to do, stand up and fight back. And by the way, the commissioners were never brought in under the 80s administration that we had. They threatened it, but they didn't come in. So who brought the commissioners in? The right wing, the people who implemented the cuts, they have brought the commissioners into this city and we need to demand of them, now is the time to stand up. And if you don't want to fight, if you don't want to search and find your backbone, get out and make way for those who will defend our workers, defend our city, defend the poor, defend the pensioners, defend the disabled people. My mind goes back to the 80s and it goes back to the time of the unions and the time of working class people organising. They weren't just organising, they were shaking corporations, they were shaking capitalism and they were shaking the police because protest works and when the workers were on the street saying we need change they had to change so what did Thatcher do? She sent the police into our organisation, she sent the police undercover into our movements to infiltrate us and to divide us. 
the infiltrated unions, the infiltrated grassroots movement, they criminalised them, put them on blacklists, and they decimated the movements by dividing and conquering them. They destroyed the unions, they destroyed working class unity. But anyone who's watching can see that that working class unity is coming back at the moment. And that is why they are trying to introduce a bill that bans us from coming together like we are today, that bans us from unifying because of our oppression, and that bans us from using our voices. It's basically the government though saying that one person can shake, the right person with a mic can shake them up so much that they want to put you in a prison for 10 years. They are doing it because it is effective, process is effective, and not only process, but peaceful process. We are not being violent. Black Lives Matter last year was completely peaceful, so they couldn't beat us with the law. And now what they're trying to do is change the law to make legal activism, legal working class activism, illegal. Now it's time for the first instalment of an exclusive interview with film director Ken Loach. I began by asking Ken, why do we need socialism? If you look at the, um, at the state of how people live and how society has developed really over centuries, you see that this, this is a society based on a conflict an inherent conflict between those who own and control and determine what we produce, how it's produced, and whose interests it's produced, and those who do the work, those who have to sell their labour. There's a conflict of interests. Um, those who in charge of production do it for profit, and that means they have to have the cheapest labour they can get that'll do the job. The interests of people is that they have a secure job and good wages that they can live with dignity and there's a conflict of interest and that as as this present system has developed has got worse and more intense so that now in a country where there's great riches we have massive poverty homelessness areas that are desolate where old industries have gone so we see that inequality we see that inefficiency we see above all the destruction of the planet, which isn't planned. And socialism is about common ownership, a planned economy, where the, what is produced is for the benefit of all and takes care of all, as opposed to the chaos of the market. So that's why we need socialism. My good friend, Jerry the Plumber, has been busy recently sorting out the plumbing of the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Rishi Sunak. Jerry's been kind enough to send me this report. And now all of a sudden, I get this text message from a bloke called Richie. I don't like replying to text messages, so I thought I'd better phone him up. Phone him up, he answers the phone. He says, hello, Richie by name, Richie by nature, he says. I said, yeah, I'm Jerry the Plumber. He said, oh, hello, Jerry the Plumber. He said, yeah, you've come highly recommended, he said, from Boris, um, Matt, Honest Bob, Mike, and um, old Mog. So, yeah, he said, um, I've had a bit of a problem with my drains. He said, my cellar um, is absolutely stinking, he said. Um, Can you pop up and see me? Um, I said, where are you? He said, um, I'm up in North Allerton, up in Yorkshire. Oh, he said, I'm sure you could do a special price for cash. I said, well, I said, I'll, I'll have to ask the Chancellor about that. And he said, he said, I am the fucking Chancellor, didn't he? Anyway, he's got there. Vast pile it is. Blimey, I nearly got lost going up the driveway. Knocked on the door, Richie answers the door with his wife. He said, hello, he said, I'm Richie, this is my wife at Charter. Apparently she got a hundred grand um, to, you know, to further herself um, from the government's job retention scheme. He said, uh, you better go around the side there. He said, the uh, door to the uh, cellar, go down there, don't I? Into the basement. God, absolutely stinking it is. Anyway, look around for the old um, inspection cover, don't I? You know, for the drains. Anyway, I found one, open one up. And um, yeah, I couldn't believe it, Phil. 
Oh, he's gone. Blocks are in there. They must have forgotten that they stashed a few down there. Took a few out. All of a sudden, the blockage clears, didn't it? Beautiful. Anyway, old Richie, he reckons he's got more work for me. Apparently he's got about four other properties, one of which is a five-bedroom mansion worth about seven million in Kensington. Not surprising the country couldn't afford more than 1% pay increase for the nurses, is it really? Well, I reckon all the Tories have got the money. Oh, blimey, I think I can hear him coming. Don't worry, Richie, we've cleared the detritus. No, it wasn't on his bob stuck down there. It's something much more valuable. <laughs> Blimey, don't know how I'm gonna get all these home. <laughs> anyway, till next time, Phil. Blimey. This programme is made by the Art of Resistance, a collective of artists and film activists who seek to give a voice to the many and not just the few. They are unpaid, but this programme still needs support to cover costs. Their work provides commentary, news, satire and art that you won't see in the mainstream media. If you can, please consider making a donation to keep this programme going. Go to the Art of Resistance website if you would like to make a donation. You can also help by sharing this programme on social media. Thanks very much. From the river to the sea! Palestine will be free! From the river to the sea! Palestine will be free! free. People around the world have been shocked and horrified by the appalling attacks in Gaza, including airstrikes that have killed many, many civilians, including children. The UK must end arms sales and military support for Israeli forces. Please send a message to your MP to demand that the UK government stops arming the apartheid state of Israel. A proud member of the Merseyside Pensioners Association. Our solidarity does not stop at the borders of this city. Our solidarity is international. An injury to every single Palestinian brutalised by the apartheid state of Israel is an injury to all of us. The BBC is the propaganda arm of 10 Downing Street. And it's not just years of oppression, it's apartheid colonism, ethnic cleansing to the Palestinian people, my people, our brothers and sisters from the Zionist Israeli government. Get that into your head, the Zionist Israeli government. So this is what our government must do, end arms sales to Israel. <laughs> We see them, and we hear them, and we stand with them against oppression and injustice today and always. Solidarity, Palestine. We happen to be Jewish as well, and on behalf of millions of Jewish people around the world, we say, not in our name. Yeah! And we must stop selling arms to oppressive regimes immediately. From the river to the sea, will be free. You can email us at contactmpatv at gmail.com. The programme was produced by Hasman Hashim. So from both of us, we wish you well, stay safe and solidarity. Mm-hmm.